my dad was an immigrant, right? Comes over here, builds a restaurant, and I could, I could imagine if I turned to him and been like, Dad, I don't know if I can sell this pizza today because I feel this is being salesy. I would have had to duck a hand <laughs> coming at the back of my head. Are you ready to rise from ordinary to extraordinary? People are fed up with ordinary. Ordinary health, broke finances, crappy relationships, disconnected family, work, love, business. Help isn't coming from Wall Street, Main Street, corporate world, governments. They had their chance, and the world isn't doing much better. There are no handouts coming, except the ones you go get yourself, because you choose to go for something more. So where is help coming from? Because we believe people want more extraordinary in their life and are willing to do the work to go get it and live it. So we went on a search to find the top influencers and coaches you may or may not have heard about. Influencers and coaches on love and relationships, purpose and meaning, wealth and finances, health and fitness, business and entrepreneurship, and more. And we brought them to our vineyard or met them around the world and asked them one question. How can you help people take their life from ordinary to extraordinary? And this is what they had to say. Hey, 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 welcome to Rise of the Visionary Podcast with Vito and Anna. Welcome to episode number one, number one, number one, number one. <laughs> It is episode number one, and this is kind of our call to arms, you guys. The we, mission declared. Yes, it is a mission of ours to help you opt out of the ordinary life and into an extraordinary life. You get to define what that is. We all have a different um, you know, definition of what extraordinary feels like, but you know, we really want to dive deep into showing the opportunity to redefine your human experience um, and your family business and your uh, business ownership, right? Mm -hmm. And your family life, all those things yeah, that the really- relationships that you mm -hmm. have in your life, pretty much the whole paradigm of what <laughs> it means to relook at how we can choose to live yes. in this modern era that has its good, has its bad and everything in between. But we're here to just focus you in on are you going to have the skill set to know how to opt out of ordinary and opt into extraordinary and to live with more freedom, yep. to get control of your life? And I think that's like one of the biggest outcomes that we're talking about here for you in this show and in this podcast is because everyone like, you know, we're going to talk about the five freedoms today. So get ready. But the five freedoms are really about how do I gain control and at what extent do I have control in my life? Because a lot of people are living in fear, insecurity, doubt, and we feel we can remove that by showing you how do you gain control back. And it's just, it often starts first in the mind. Absolutely. And we're not just going to be the teachers here on this podcast. We're going to be having so many amazing guests with Good conversations guests. about, you know, different tools and skills that we need as stepping stones to help you live an extraordinary life. Cause that's what we all need, right? Is just those stepping stones to get us closer and closer to our dream goals and yep. living that happy place, entrepreneurial life that we call that's it. That's what we call it. Yep. And I think more and more the world is, is, like ready to know what does it mean to be a happy place entrepreneur you're gonna have to stay tuned to keep on knowing what that's about that's but it. by bringing a lot like you know Anne and i have done you know we've gone from that broke and shattered and freaking not living our ideal lives to being able to be where we're at today but it's also showing you not just through our own story but the stories of the people that we bring on because there is a different way that um, visionaries and people that are living extraordinary are choosing to build their businesses and handle their money and finances and yep. spend their time, leverage the relationships and the networks and the people that they have around them and how they're talking about what they're doing in life 
And I think exposing more people to those conversations and how people think that way and what kind of actions they take starts to let you kind of create a roadmap for yourself because we don't have just the one way. There is no one way. Right. All we can do is expose you to as many of the different thinking and skills and habits and behaviors and processes and choices that we did and the other people that are in our lives have done that could be the clues to success for you carving out your own path. That's it. I mean, we have spent so much time and invested so much of our energy in the relationships that we've found in our life, seeking out mentors and really surrounding ourselves by people who have evolved thinking. And we want to expose more people to that network because it's helped us grow. It's helped us build and build our dream experience. So we're not saying that we have all the answers because we don't. We're always seeking um, new advice and tips and strategies from people that are amazing and have wisdom to share and we're bringing them on the show to really um, open more eyes up to the, the 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 opportunities in front of us and me and Vito know that we have more things to achieve yeah, yeah. and that's why the more we can talk to other visionaries and get inside their head the better we're going to be I know. Selfishly, we were like, let's have this podcast because <laughs> we get to invite some amazing guests that come on. And not only are you learning from them, but we're learning from them. Yep. And that's how uh, the entire world gets better all together. That's all right. At once. That's why this is the rise of the visionary. We're all lifting each other. That's right. Because I mean, in, in a man, in, for where the world is today, I think it's just got to be about changing the conversation because you flip on the news, you flip on the media, and the conversation is low. It's petty often. Um, there isn't very meaningful, uh, well-debated conversations going on that we're like, well, yeah. luckily with a podcast and uh, YouTube and channels and email and all the stuff that we talk about when we teach our, our students how to go out there and build their businesses and their brands, you can learn how to be like, well, hell, in my small area of the world mm -hmm. and with the, the impact that I can make and the people that I can gather around, we get to share a message and say, well, these are the conversations we're having around good food, good wine, sitting on vineyards, sitting in villas in Europe and whatnot and being like, this is what extraordinary living can be. You just got to go earn. Right. And that's why we want to talk about the five freedoms mm -hmm. that we feel create an extraordinary life because, you know, we've looked at, you know, how we live and what we value most, like what matters most to us. Right. And, and we believe that it is freedom overall, but freedom of what, right? Freedom of time and yeah. that people are just done being, you know, a, kind of a, uh, what is it? A slave to the man. They have mm -hmm. no control over their schedule. Or they the live clock, for the, the weekends and, and the, the holidays. Calendar, all that's ticking and running their day. And that's what we've known. Yeah. But what we can know is the ability to control your own agenda, set your own schedule, set your own time. If we're like one of the biggest reasons that we created our businesses to work from home, to be online and whatnot is the fact that we're like we wanted to be there every morning with our kid, be able to feed him and give him breakfast every day, torture him a little bit, <laughs> play Jedi versus Sith Lord and whatnot, and be like, Drag Good. him around in his Pretty little much box. drag around in his little <laughs> box. But those are the memories and the moments that a lot of people aren't getting to live, and time is ticking, and in a precious, short life, and I think more and more people are waking up to the idea that life is precious, life is short. It's not just a cute phrase anymore. It's not just something that we say down the road. Now we gotta be like, I, got, I understand that. I, I, I process that. You know, some people need to wait for the emergency to happen in their lives to get that. But the highly aware, are like, no, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to get cancer or have somebody die or have something like that. I've heard enough of those stories. I've had enough of those experiences in my life to start being like, time's precious. How do I live more of it? Because I remember growing up, I didn't have my dad around much. Yeah. You know, he worked all the time. He was an immigrant right off the boat from Sicily. And he worked from sun up until sundown because that's what they knew. That was the era. That was that time. But that's not today anymore. That was the old American dream, the immigrant's work ethic, which taught us a ton. But he never saw a game of mine. Mm. He never was there to talk about girls. He was never there to really be like my dad. He was a provider. 
and he taught me amazing lessons, but he wasn't there to be like my best friend, dad type right. thing. And when we decided to have Luca, we're like, that's not how we want our life to be. So we better change it before. Luckily, I started changing that reality <laughs> like in 2010 yeah. when I was like bleeding out in my <laughs> brick and mortar business. Not where the business wasn't successful, but where the business was like, I leave at 4.35 a.m. I come home at 8, 9 o'clock at night. Could you imagine if, let alone you didn't get to have me as much as you do? I know. What would I do without you, you here all the time? Could you imagine you... <laughs> didn't have me around as much as like you do right now. So a little thank you well, card. Well, you know, I always knew that I wanted to be a mom one day. Early in my career, I knew that time was going to be very precious because I grew up with a single mom with six kids. Mm. And she had to work all the time, right? Like when she Or did she want to be away from you six? <laughs> she, There's the question. Yeah, I know, right? I would. I have one and six I can hardly kids, keep up. I'd be like... Put me on another shift. Put me on another shift right now. That's good. Which one's the oldest? They could take care of them. She did her best when she was home to, you know, connect and, and be there. But how much energy do you really have when you're working full time and, and raising kids? And I know that that's a reality for many moms out there, many single dads even, mm -hmm. where you're just like, I'm either working or I'm spending a few hours with my family. And I know that every single person I talk to, every parent says, what is the most valuable thing to you in your life? And they say family. Mm -hmm, and when mm -hmm. maybe a quarter of your time is spent with the most valuable people in your life, that's when you can say, no, that's not going to be my reality. I choose differently. And it might not happen tomorrow, but it will happen if I'm intentional about making it happen. So well, that's what we're talking about when it that's comes the thing to we got, like, you freedom dig in right there, though, deciding. Like, because all these freedoms that this like inaugural kickoff pot like episode or about have to come down to understand that everything's about choice. Everything's about intentionality. Nothing happens by happens. Well, I won't say nothing happens by happenstance, but we have to make that choice because the way it was and the way it is still for many people is I accept the ordinary hours. I accept the time clock that the corporate world has put on me. But today you could be like, I don't have to, I don't got to live for the weekend. I'm going to live for holidays. But how do you do it? Yep. How do you start getting control of your schedule and your agenda? It's tough in the job world. It's tough in the corporate world because they're like, no, no, no. The bottom line of, of Wall Street and corporate numbers yeah. drive, I want you working as much as you can. They'll suck as much out of you as you can in there. If you're a service-based business, you're, you're usually only making money when you're freaking when you show up. in the hours. We've so both time been there. freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but. We were there because that's all we knew. But then the moment that awareness came that there's another option, another way, yep. we were like, last scene going that away. Like we Absolutely. were jet tailing it over to there. And that's where online network marketing really provided those options as how to start building a business. Now high ticket coaching, done hybrid where it's an online business with live retreats, experiences, coaching and things like that is changing the game for the next and X I think amount. that's the conversation that X we want to have with you guys is that like you know we're talking about freedoms here and we're starting just with time and we're saying there are other options to get more time in your day to do the things that you want to do and it's just choosing a different model of how you're making your money and where you're investing your your expertise and your energy to make revenue and income for your family. So yep. it's about choosing the model that aligns with truly what you want. And I know there's a lot of people that don't want entrepreneurship. That's 100%, okay. 100%, but correct. But and then accept the time you're given. Correct, correct. That's the thing that I'm. we're always talking about then. That's cool, but then don't bitch about where your life is at or you're not getting the things there. Right. You chose that. As long as it's by choice, I think it's a fair game. Yep. But then also don't keep wishing and wanting and dreaming and hoping but not willing to then go change the way you're doing things. Yep. Because what you've been doing got you where you're at. Unless you're willing to change your thinking and your behavior and your habits and your skills – you can't get the next thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we're going to be sharing as well throughout all these episodes is how do you do this stuff? Right now, it's just do you accept the premise that you want more time freedom where it's not like it sounds good written on some paper or whatnot, but you're like, 
This is an intention that must happen in my life. And you set a deadline for it and you're going to make it happen because it took me four years from 2010 when I decided to 2014 when I was able to completely get out of brick and mortar. It took me that amount of time, four years to build. That's not that bad. Not compared to a lifetime of regret, a lifetime of wishing. Exactly. A lifetime of hoping. Exactly. We don't believe when in those things. When I met you in 2012. When I saved you. <laughs> you. You introduced me to network marketing as an option to start generating more income that would provide me more time freedom. Mm -hmm. And I had four jobs. I was driving around LA, hustling like a crazy person, managing a studio, teaching group fitness, trying to build my own online business, making DVD programs. I was trying everything that I knew of to try and gain more financial support mm -hmm. and security in my life. But that was just taking more time and then I ran out of time. And when you said network marketing can start to give me the opportunity to regain time plus earn financial gains, it was a no brainer for me to move in that direction. But it takes that awareness, right? And I just said, I'm in it. And it took yeah. me how many years? Four years until it I was fully like free like, of the here's, jobs. Here's what you did that's different of what most people do because you ain't the only person I had that conversation with. The 10 girls I was trying to date before you. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> just, so true, though. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> this but, is probably truth, but it's but, okay. Uh, no, I think about it because uh, with all the people that come into network marketing, yes. it sounds like the easiest way to go have your own business, to go get it out there. It's almost it's like the, a dream, right? It's correct. Like, oh, it's almost it's just such like, a dream oh, it only business. costs it a couple hundred real. bucks and you get to work it when you want and whatnot, yeah. which is all true, <laughs> which is part of the, the tough part about it. But then like, so when I had that conversation with you when we were on that date and I told you about the, I'm like the idea of like, so you always want somebody to own your hours. You always want to be trapped under your hours and whatnot. And I showed you how network marketing in particular, the one that we chose that was in alignment with what you do was going to be a gateway. You started doing shit. We've been in, I've had the network marketing business for a decade now. And I can tell you that 10 to 20% do shit with it. Oh yeah. Because unfortunately, that's a quantity game, not always a quality one. Right. But what sets you apart from many people and why you've done the things and become a host of a, of a pop sugar and all these other things is because you don't just set an intention. You go actually do it. You fight for it. You go to get better. Thanks, You babe. meet great people such as your husband and things like that and whatnot that those are the things. Well, when we talk about difference. people freedom, I can talk about how we met, but let's keep moving on. That's right. But so <laughs> the idea just simply being here right now, though, is like, is your appetite wet for time freedom? Yeah. Because you want it and you see people live in that way and you say, why not me? So write down for yourself, yeah, time freedom is what I freaking want. Then understand why you're not getting it. Because if you're in the corporate service job, small business world, it's not that it's not possible in there, it's a, but it's very, very difficult in there. Then you have to ask yourself, well, what changes do I need to go make and how do I make those changes? And the ones that we're seeing mostly now for the what we teach and what we're out there coaching people is – get a network marketing business and get an online business and start crossbreeding those things or choose one or the other mm -hmm. and freaking get rocking and rolling and building that because that's going to be the gateway to finally one day owning your own schedule. I mean, that's it. There it is. Freedom number one. <laughs> Let's dive into freedom number two because it's one of my favorites. Money. Money, money, money. <laughs> I think a lot what, of people are uncomfortable talking about money. And I know I used to be uncomfortable talking about making mm -hmm. money, um, demanding what I'm worth, um, charging, um, making a sale, all that stuff. I used to be like, oh, Sales. I just oh, want to change lives. And I, and, I, and I didn't realize that it's all the same thing. It, it, you, if you're adding value and you're putting service out into the world and impacting lives and making a difference, you're rewarded for that. And, and that's just how economies are run. I think people are like confusing. It's how the markets run. It's how yeah, everything runs. It's how everything I runs. always used to joke with people. I'm like, you don't like you don't like sales. You don't like whatever. I'm like, where'd you get those jeans? You stitch that shit together yourself. <laughs> Some people they're like, do. No, I went. 
They're like, I went and bought it. And I'm like, well, then you better go goddamn yell at that bitch. You better go tell her, <laughs> she you son sold of a you bitch a for selling me those jeans, you ho. But, da, da, da. but since she wasn't personally making the money, then, you know, I see how some people kind of feel icky about selling themselves, right? Because it's harder to sell yourself than to sell someone else. And that's a reality, but that's your money mindset. And if you ever want to be free financially and secure and be able to control the income you have and the life that you're living, you've got to get over the fact that like... I, but, but I mean, where does that come from? It's not... We're not birth comes, thinking sales exactly. or... Exactly. That is a cultural thing. Yes. A family thing. Yes. A just you thing. Because it's agnostic. It has nothing to do with anything besides I, the fact that like you haven't potentially grown up. <laughs> and you haven't potentially thought for yourself. Because, I mean, like, my, my dad was an immigrant, right? Comes over here, builds a restaurant. And I could, I could imagine if I turned to him and been like, Dad, I don't know if I can sell this pizza today because I feel this is being salesy. I would have had to duck a hand <laughs> coming at the back of my head to be like, I left my family in Italy I left my friends in Italy to come here to provide a better opportunity for you. And you are worried about $10, $20 feeling salesy when this is what puts the food on the table, puts the house that we have above us, gives us the opportunity, put you through college, put, got you your car and do other things. It's in my mind, that conversation needs to be addressed and called out way better. We tap dance around it mm-hmm. to be really like nice. Don't feel bad that you're feeling salesy. The fucking car salesman thing <laughs> is over. <laughs> Selling is serving. You can learn how to do it with ethics and with morals and with value and all that stuff and grow the fuck up. Well, you should. Like if, if you're not, then you're a creep. And you're out there being a shyster. Or you're just like, be okay collecting your wage from other people that are out selling. 100%. Who was I talking to just today about, oh, when we had Luis Diaz, Mm -hmm. Podcast Domination, whose episode will come out when we re-record it and whatnot. (laughs) But he was just like, what we, it was the best thing because he's like, what I'm investing in right now because I asked him, like, where's your PD? What are you doing with your professional and personal development right now? And he was just like, oh, I'm in a sales course right now. I was just like, <laughs> he's just like a couple thousand dollars worth of a sales course. Because he's just like, nothing can control your future better than the ability to sell. Yeah. Nothing. Because then you can control money. And financial freedom needs to be about your ability to control the money that you make. No longer be subject to yeah. somebody else telling you what you're worth, how much you can make. You have the skill and the capacity and the capability to earn what you want. That's financial freedom. Absolutely. And that's what we got to be freaking digging into, not just here in Rise of the Vision. We dig into that over with the visionary planner. We dig into that with our beach body team. We dig into that with the, all the visionaries that we have in our lives and that we hang out with. And that we like, that's the everyday conversation. Everyone's talking about how do I elevate up? How do I actually like our conversations about how do we drive sales? How do we do that? Because we're like in that we are driving the impact out there, let alone we're creating the lives of our dreams before we're like, shit. I mean, like, no one getting any younger, except for me. Oh, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, looking younger Come every day. On. But it's Look so true, this. and I love this conversation because every time I have this conversation with you or with one of our guests, like hearing it from Tatiana and, and Nick and Ra and everyone that we've met through the High Performance Mastermind and things, I realize that... You know, a lot of how I grew up, you know, being very poor on welfare, mom can't give you a dollar to go to the movies, things that you're saving, things that you're storing because you're afraid of going without and all this stuff is that like, we were always afraid to spend. So I input, I put that on others. Like, I think others feel that same way. Like they're afraid to spend, they can't afford it. They can't buy it. I shouldn't be asking for them to invest, but that's just my own fears from way back when I was a kid and every time I have this conversation, I'm always like, I'm serving. 
people want what I have to offer. They actually need what I have to give. It's going to give them a better life. It's going to help them grow. It's like they want to invest. They want to be there. They want to show up. And so it's my own head that gets mm-hmm. in the way. Yeah. I, so the thing is, is like, I agree with what you're saying, but I don't validate it in the sense of this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not, not that it's not real as in what you experience, but I'm like, we all have the choice because my dad, same thing. Like they went from rich to poor, rich to poor with all the times at the spaghetti factories in Italy and all that lived in streets. Yeah. My grandma used to have to say, mangiamo le rocce, like we ate the rocks yeah. and whatnot, that they were very scared to spend. Yeah. But I didn't adapt that as a philosophy of how I lived. That's right. That was my dad's mindset. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to become my mindset. Mm-hmm. I was fortunate that in my life, one of the influences, and these are like, you know, we're going to talk about the influences in another episode where we could really talk about what can change these things. Mm-hmm. But I had the influence of a cousin that exposed me to high level thinking, reading books beyond, I was a ninth grader reading collegiate books and different things yeah. like that, started being exposed to economic books, money books and all that. So I just started reading about money, studying money early on that I was just like, I like that. <laughs> I like that concept right there <laughs> yeah. and whatnot that I'm like, I made learning about money something that showed up on my agenda. Right. Right after I would read Lord of the Rings and things like that, it was about making money right now. And that's still to this day. I'm reading books about money right now. I'm reading Dan Kennedy's Almost Alchemy, yes. which is about the very concept about how money reacts to you, right. not even how you react to money. That it's just like when you have that kind of thinking, you have the ability to control the spigot of what money happens in your life. But why aren't people having that? That's the conversation that we're having right now because yeah. when you've had family influence you that way, that becomes a problem. If you've had institutions like religions and things like that that make you feel certain things about money, that becomes a problem. When you've had schools and different thinking, and what were the, you had, you grew up in a poor neighborhood and that was your only view that you had out there. But it doesn't mean, but there's just too many stories of people that broke out of that as to say that that is the norm that should be. It's the norm that is, but it shouldn't be. It goes back to choice. And this is what we've been talking about is like, you don't like how much time you have on your plate. Well, you can choose differently. You don't like how much money you're making or how much money you don't have. It's your choice to change your mindset about money. And so I and deliberately change your model. And, change and change your, your model, model because I'm like, when I had a studio and it was brick and mortar, even when my dad had the restaurant, my sister has her landscaping business. I've been around small business my whole life. Right. You're still always like, there's margins, there's <laughs> payroll, there's exactly. overhead, there's this and that. That it's not that it can't be, mm-hmm. but you better be. You better figure out that franchise model. You better figure out your operations and your systems to be able to pull you out. Right. And you better love selling and marketing. Because if you hate selling and marketing and you're a small business, you basically own your job. You own your job. You own right. your service. So you got to look at the model. You work when for I was a else. service. Yeah, I was a service based like employee forever, and it's like Hooters? no. Oh, sorry, Gosh. wrong one. He's such a jerk. <laughs> but when I broke free of Hooters, it was when I could I really knew it was start. True. <laughs> I knew it was true. I was like rollerblading down the boardwalk in my bikini. Right. You're getting on. creepy thoughts right now. Anyway, but it was just an Do employer's decision of what they were going to pay you. And it was only your time that you were compensated for. And so it is all about the model. That's when I said, I need to develop my own model. Correct. Correct. And like, cause like, Corporate America, corporate wherever, corporate world, global, they're only going to pay you X amount. Not that they won't help you achieve high financial, but forget that time freedom thing. Forget the location freedom thing, which we're going to talk about next. Yeah. So there's always a, a, a good and minus to it. But like, if you can change your model, and right now the models that we're seeing that are truly changing the game of how much financial freedom you can have is network marketing online. Not business. that there's other things. There's other entrepreneurial avenues and things like that. But for the person that's like like when we had Dr. Vince out here, right. 30 years as an expert getting people out of pain 
but he's just like 30 years I'm burnt out. That's and we're it. like, well, why don't we take that expertise and that knowledge and package it into online coaching, online courses, create events and retreats and different things like that. Yeah. And he's just like, I had no idea this was possible. Yeah. And now he's ready to just blow open them up to up. the global market. And there's so many more people that need Dr. Vince in their life. And he has the tools and the resources to share with more people, with the masses. He just didn't know how to do it. Well, it's because we all think it's just the time I deliver yeah. and the service I must manually do. Like yeah. we came from fitness and wellness. Everyone thought it's about how I actually have to train the person there. You're like, no, no, no. It's about the process and the systems and the methodology of what you do mm -hmm. to get that so you can sell the result. And I think the last thing that I would hit about financial freedom is you have to learn how to, how to package value, how to promote, how to sell, how right. to market. Cause if you can't do that, all you know, it's like, when I used to deal with all the trainers and even myself, I used to go get the TRX cert. I got the uh, Lenny Parasino this and the Paul check that and the this, that. And I'm like, oh my God, all those degrees and certifications, I'm going to make more when I come back. Yet I didn't know how to sell or market the change I had just learned how to deliver. Right. I'm like, I still, I, I was like, I'm better at doing this service, but I don't know how to go put that in a flyer or put that in an email or make a video about that to say, Hey, if you've been suffering with low back pain, I can get you pain free in three freaking steps. I didn't know how to do it. Just be like, I could sell you a 20 pack of sessions. Right. It's so a you big gotta, deal. you're going to have to learn sales marketing. You're going to have to want to be like, I nerd out on that. Mm -hmm. It becomes again, all these things should be becoming part of the agenda that you're putting. Because if you're going to rise as a visionary and not live ordinary, but live extraordinary, the skill set of selling and marketing as an entrepreneur has to be in your pocket. Yeah. Cool. I love it. Give them number three. It's our favorite. It's our well, favorite. Okay. It's our so favorite after freedom financial. of location, it's your ability to pick your, we call it your happy place, your vista. Like to be at the place where you love spending your time. Well, the, your vista is what place, you love seeing the, every day. You love seeing it. You love being the in it. The nature that you love seeing. You know, when we bought this house um, in Temecula mm -hmm. with three acres of property and it was like this vision we had for what we could create with this property. And we knew that we wanted to have a vineyard one day. I loved the gardens because I love gardening. I wanted to be surrounded by rose bushes and plants and sage and lavender and all sorts of things. And I wanted to be around grapes and vineyards. <laughs> yes, exactly. And mountains I and I want horizons. you to think about right now, like, where is your vista? And if you could live and work there, how amazing would that be? How would you feel every day waking up to that vista and being able to control, um, you know, your surroundings and being in the environment that just fully lets you be creative and um, kind Let of you do your thing. Let yeah, you make your magic. The, it's all about because, like, I'm like uh, the, that daily dream experience. You said it's like even being in the food and culture. Correct. Like the like, food and the drink and the scenes and right, the people. Right, because like today you can literally architect for yourself what you want every day to look like. Do you want it to be mountains? Yeah. Do you want it to be oceans? Right. Do you want it to be gardens? Do you want it to be chalets? It, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Do you want to be around skiing because that's one of your passions? Yeah. And you want to be around that most of the time of the year? Awesome. Are you like, I love the ocean. I want to be around that. For me, I was always like, we're Italian or Sicilian, no less. Yeah. We were raised around wine, Italian culture. That I was like, oh my God, if one day I could have my own like Tuscan style villa have a vineyard and I just didn't I had no right in 2010 to like make that intention but I, I we live by these but good for you cards. like without the right you allowed yourself to dream big well yeah because luckily I had the best musicians growing up in my life and they were always talking about living your dreams and yeah. going after that and let alone the books and the things that I read mm -hmm. um kept there we could do we should just do an episode just purely on books and music <laughs> totally yeah but, because if 
people saw your bookshelf in your library, they would geek out at how much you've been in That, or they'd be like, reading. I would never waste the time doing that, and that's why they're the broke people. <laughs> yeah. I, I well, mean, that's it. I was broke until I met you and started reading books. I hadn't read it. You were just siphoning <laughs> off all my prior labor, Anna. But I wasn't around the right people early on in my career to really be investing in my learning around, you know, better finances and money mindset and dreaming bigger. It wasn't until I started getting around the right mentors that they started to encourage me to go for more because I think most people, they're not thinking bigger than where they are. And Vito and I were talking about this a little bit because when you are a small town girl like me and you grow up in a small town, all you know is a small town life and you think that that's where it's going to happen. It's that's where you are supposed to be. And if you're not happy there, just like make the best of it and like deal with it and, and be content with what you've been given and, and don't try to go for more. But it's like, if that's in your heart and in your soul to want more, that's your right. And that's up to you to decide to go up and reach for it, at least dream for it and be intentional towards getting there. That's it. I mean, like it's funny because like the thing that is there's a couple things that are denying people the ability to have location where where you can choose where you want to live in the world. Mm -hmm. Number one, the money. Mm -hmm. Are you making enough money to live in the place that you want where it's your dream thing? Because like remember when we were looking at ocean places and we were in Santa Monica <laughs> and Venice and all that. And we were like, oh, we can totally do this. This is us. We're ocean people. We love this. Da, da, da. Yeah. And then when we started looking for property, we were like. Fuck you. <laughs> we're like five million to live down here in a shanty shack type thing. Right. This and that that we're like, this isn't what we want to spend to live at a place like that. Yeah. And we're like, but good thing we have the ability to, but we're just like, we don't want that. Most people don't have the ability to have the income that travels with them. So they're like, I'm tied to like when I had my brick and mortar, yep. I was tied to Orange County. No offense, Orange County. I just did not want to live there all the freaking time. Yep. That I was just like, I had planted a studio there, though. That meant for 10 years, I was working a business there. And if I had decided to keep on that path, mm -hmm. I would have been there for the rest of my life. If I was just like, this is all I'm going to have is this brick and mortar. But luckily, then I got introduced to the network marketing and the online. And when I was able to replace the income and change my business model... I was like, peace out. You Last got to decide where you spend but your so day. So people don't, people either like, I don't have the money. I'm tied to a business or a job. Yep. Then ambition. Mm -hmm. The ambition to want to grow That's and it. the capabilities to earn the kind of money, know how to operate and own a business that allows you to live wherever you want. Right. A lot of people just don't possess it. That's right. They talk about it and they wish about it. But after 10 years in a network marketing business and how many years with Visionary Planner, how many people come in, talk about it, they can get sold on the dream, but then when the work is hard and success is never convenient, they pack their bags and go back to the old way. And that's what we talk about when it comes to taking your ambition and actually developing the skills, right, and the habits to make your dreams a reality because you can have all the ambition in the world, but if you don't intentionally go develop the skills that you need to be successful, then it's just a stranded idea. It's a hope. No, because dream. none of us were birthed knowing how to do that. We developed exactly. that skill. It's always why when people are like, how did you do it? I'm like, well, I chose a different model. We went online and we built network marketing. Then the second thing that I really focused on was I built high performance habits. That's how right. do we build high performance? Like if, like Brendan Bouchard hadn't come in. Not that we didn't have other mentors. Todd started to teach me a ton of shit and different other yep. people and musicians and different stuff. But Brendan's like framework of high performance became the Changed pillar, the, game for the us. cornerstone of all that. And that's why we became certified in that methodology to be able to be like, I need to hold my feet to the fire Yes, because the amount of wine I drink, <laughs> I, my high performance habits can fall off the back end in a moment. So I'm like, I need to be able to train it. So no matter when I'm drinking, my high performance is still there. Well, productivity has to be a skill set when you got a lot to do in a little amount of time and you've got big oh, right, dreams and you want to get there faster. <laughs> What's everybody's reason for not getting there? I don't got the time. I don't, I don't the got time. the time. 
I was like, I know, I know plenty you guys of, are nice. I know plenty of mothers with multiple children that have built successful online businesses, successful network marketing business, and have retired their husbands and have decided to move their family. It's happening every day. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's not an excuse. It's just, well, it is an excuse. No, it's, it's not an excuse. a reason. So, it's not a reason why you, you're, you don't have more or you're not able to take your family somewhere else or live the place that you want. It's just an excuse of why you won't start. Yep. Because it starts with just or getting started. Or why you give up. Yeah. It's either a non-starter. We're not talking to those people in this podcast. No, We're people, talking about the rise of the visionaries. <laughs> those people hate us. They actually don't want to talk to us. No. You guys... You guys are hungry for this, but we're reiterating these pains and these reasons because we want you to stay on this track even when it does get hard, even That's, when yeah, it doesn't, you know, come to fruition as soon as you want it to. We it never know does. It never it freaking never does. comes as fast and as just you so wished, you know, or as much as you hoped. Vito and I still have dreams we haven't achieved, obviously. Like there's stuff that we want to do and stuff we have planned for the family, like being bi-coastal, our families from the East Coast, we're living in the West Coast. We've got no, a no, house no, here. No, 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 no. <laughs> he knows it's true. I've learned we to get along with family. We want to be in Europe one month out of the live year. Live <laughs> three. Now, Europe's a different story. <laughs> to be happy with family, live 3,000 so miles Even when you and your away. spouse disagree on your dream, you can create whatever you want. That's right. And then you have two separate houses. <laughs> And it's fine. And you guys get together <laughs> periodically, but you're going to get around new people. Yeah. You get around new people. You're exposed to this kind of thinking. Oh, and that comes to our next. Uh, That's what I'm saying. People boom. freedom. People freedom. The ability to hang with and experience and be mentored by the people you want. Because so many people yeah. are just around D-bags and negative energy people vampires. and naysayers. And yeah. Energy, and, and it's family, friends, work. And I'm like, you don't have to choose anymore to be surrounded by that. Stop bitching about the people that you have at work. Figure something to get the fuck out. Your family sucks at the ball sometimes. <laughs> Limit the time with them. Learn to develop the skill. Right. To just be like, I don't need to be around you all the time. Amicable. And limit, Amicable is a limit, good way to be it. Limit the time. Because I know that you um, have had, you know, your siblings, like you love your siblings, but you're like, okay, certain people in my family, I want to limit my time with. For me, I'm like, I love my family, but sometimes it's like not the energy that I need to be around. So I'm like, I have to limit that time so that I keep myself at my best. You know, the people in our lives are the ones that can hold us down from really shining as brightly as we want to and as often as we want to. Mm -hmm. So it's important well, that it's, we know it's this. It's killer because if you look, listen, if you, here's a good test for you. If you, where are you? And look at who you have around you. Because you're exactly where you're meant to be based upon the people that you have around you. To achieve a new level, you have to go get a new group of people to lift you, to give you new skills, to elevate you. So you should be always in the pursuit of the new circle of genius or the additions yeah. to the circle of genius. And people that are growth-oriented, growth mindset, not fixed. Like a lot of friends and family are fixed. In their mindset, they've yeah. never evolved, never matured, never developed new skills. So they can only give you so much advice and so much opportunity and so much thinking that in today's world, though, you don't have to opt into that anymore. Yeah. Because the ability to network, get in masterminds, get in coaching Oh, it's programs, never been bigger. It's, it's never been easier, yeah. too. Never been more available, never been more well, it's, easy. It, it's now, you know, a lot of people say that social media has created like this, this isolation a little bit, not as so much connection. You know, it's like we've never been more connected, but more disconnected. Correct. Because you can just live on your phone in isolation, never having to really see anyone because you feel like you're socializing on social media. But socializing ain't the same as investing in yourself and your growth. Well, that's right. But social, I feel like we're opposite. exposed nowadays to so many more influencers that can positively impact our lives. I started following Brendan Burchard when you introduced me to him. I started listening to his podcast. I started listening to other podcasts. And then I started just finding this network of people I will never meet probably, but they are influencing my life in a very powerful way. Mm -hmm. That's what we hope to do with Rise of the Visionaries. Like, hey, if you never come into our world, 
I mean, I hope you do, but if you don't, I hope that we get to influence you in a positive way that allows you to grow as a person. And that's the opportunity that we have today is to really choose the people that we want to be mentored by, surrounded by, influenced by, because we can watch the negative media. We can watch the news that doesn't fill us up, but empties us every day. People that get worried and stressed and nervous. It's like, maybe you, maybe change your source of input that you're getting each day. That's a big thing. What are you taking in? Yeah. Even down to the things as far as just like the music you listen to. Yeah. I'm like some of the bubblegum pop absolute garbage ass <laughs> music as compared to like Eddie Vedder oh, and Pearl Jam. I knew it. I knew Maynard it. and Tool. <laughs> Those kind of people that are doing intelligent music. John Baptiste. I mean, I love like, you know, Michael DeFront Michael, what is it? Michael Franti. Oh, he's such a happy music is. person. Um, uh, happy music. Happy music. I'm, I'm all, all about, about deep, like, meaningful music. I know Anna. you are. You're about the deep, meaningful. I'm about the, like the happy, uplifting music. I love Dave Matthews, but he's not Dave very Matthews happy. Deep he's and kind of depressing. No, he's not. He's freaking writes fairy tales at times. I love his music. You, uh, his but... music is fantastic. <laughs> he's deep meaningful yeah. he makes you think mm -hmm. and he's teaching values and principles in his music about how to Absolutely. go eat drink and be merry what yeah. else is there to really freaking yeah. know that is life buttoned up right there it's true but a lot of people out there are just not really understanding that you can opt out of the bad group it. opt into a better group and even down to your business yeah this was my favorite thing when i started thinking about people freedom i started just thinking about the fact that i'm like you know I remember when I was a bit, uh, like when I had my studio and even in the network marketing, when I used to sometimes be like, God, I wish I knew better how to choose the people in my business. Yeah. So that, cause when I first didn't know how to grow the business the way I, I needed to, you took any client that could come. Right. And sometimes they weren't the clients that you really freaking wanted to have. And you had to deal with their attitudes, their energy, their this and that and whatnot that I wish I had just known better to be like, if I want to get the, like today, the reason we created our model the way we did and the business the way we do and the marketing the way we do and the, even the way we're talking right now is because we're like, the people that are like half asses, they're going to be like, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. You're a dick. You remind me of how I'm an asshole. You're this and that. You make me feel bad. I'm like, perfect. You go in your little corner and worry about that. Oh. The people that are like, Oh, dude, you're talking my language. Mm -hmm. It's no BS. It's straight talk. You're challenging me to get better, and you're also there to help me to get better. Great. Those well, are the people that you can be like, I want to be surrounded by those people, other visionaries, other mentors. Half the reason I, I travel all over this freaking world to masterminds and things is because I'm like, I get to be in a room with people that are having an elevated conversation, and that brings me joy and fulfillment. And from that, I'm able to come back and go serve on a bigger level. That's building a business based on quality, mm -hmm. not quantity. And that leads to a lot more happy place, entrepreneurialism. Because if you don't like the people you're dealing with in your business, you got the tire kickers, the freeloaders, the cheapskates, just think what that's like in your business every day as compared to the people that are like, I've got an investment mindset, a commitment mindset, a like get after it mindset, a tell me like it is mindset so that I can live that extraordinary life. Yeah. I mean, Vito, freedom, one baby. of the things I freedom. loved about you when I first met you. One of the things. One of the things out of you, many. We can do an episode about all the ways that It was you how me. much you really didn't care what people thought of you. And, you know, because when I first met you, you're a whole lot of energy and you are no I'm BS. Not sure what, I'm, I'm, I'm and you speak what you're your mind. You don't give a crap or S H I T what people think about you. And Anna, it's our own show. You can curse. You know I know, that, right? but I mean, I just don't want to take away from the fact that like, you know, it's important. It brings us a sense of peace, actually, when we stop worrying about pleasing everyone else and making sure that they're okay with us and just really being who we want to be and surrounding ourselves by those that accept us and lift us up. And when I met you, Vito, I was like, wow, this guy's not toning it down just because somebody around him might not be at his level or they might not appreciate what he's saying or may, they might not like what he's saying. And you just didn't tune it. You, you just don't take yourself out of your 
own element to appease others. Mm -hmm. And I respected that because I think I was kind of still thinking, I gotta, I gotta be a pleaser. I got everyone. I want everyone to like me and I want to be, you know, kind of accepted by people. And that, that actually hurt me from finding my real truth and my real identity of like who I wanted to show up like. Mm -hmm. So when I started working on myself and high performance and all of that, and just even being around you more, I realized like, let it go, right? You get to choose who you want to be surrounded by. And that's only going to elevate your life. It's not going to diminish your life to not be accepted by people. You know, it's really important. People understand this, because yeah, there are yeah. too many people pleasers out there afraid to speak their minds. And that's why I think our society is where it at, where it is because people are not raising their voice. They're not speaking up for what they believe in and they're well, toning it down for others. A lot of people pushed down, yeah. told they're not good enough, silenced. And part of this idea of, of opting out of ordinary is to opt out of that. Yeah. And if, the minute you understand also that, I don't need everybody to like me. I don't even like, I just need the right people. Yeah. I'll never forget when Lisa Sasevich taught us that lesson where she's just like, her dad taught her the lesson where she was freaking out about selling and whatnot. And he's like, oh, sweetie, you don't need everybody. You just need the right people. Yeah. And she's like, that was a major lesson in my life to build my brand the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that one lesson. And that's something I've just lived in my whole life. I, I just. It. It's not about their thoughts of me. Mm -hmm. You know who will, will stand the test of time and what will be what I did is the body of work we've done. That's right. What our family, what the people that we've impacted say about things. That's right. And the legacy that we leave behind. Not people's opinions and judgments because those ain't live in our dreams. And we meet people every day that are like, ooh, network marketing, I don't know what my family will say, or my friends are going to disown me, or this and that. And I'm like, wow, like you want more freedom? You want to build your own financial stability? You want to have the location freedom for your family? You want to do all these things? But you're not going to choose a model that is going to support that dream because you're afraid of what your family will say? Well, and, and that <laughs> is just the core of it. That is the core of caring too much about other people's opinions and not having yet the wherewithal to step back and ask who is that person to be giving me advice. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Because I remember when that lesson came to me, I'm like, like I, uh, many, many people in my life have tried to be, and I'm like, who are you? You're divorced three times. You're in a job <laughs> that you hate. You're overweight and unhealthy you hate your life. You, like a lot of your friends don't hang out with you. I'm like, how can you you're be the judging? Person yeah. Giving me motherfucking advice. <laughs> That's okay. I'd rather listen to this person yeah. that is living the life that I want to live and is saying, hey, brother, I think you need to do this. Mm. I think you need to look at it. I think you need to rethink about how you're attacking this. And I'm like, good advice because you're living the way I want. You have the same values, the same morals, the same uh, chasing of excellence. Yes. So I'm like, I'll listen to you. I'll give that weight. I'll give that gravitas as compared to like somebody that is in a deadbeat job that hates their life. And I don't want to make it about where you are just in your job because there are people that are amazing people, have amazing values in jobs and things like that, but they're choosing to still live their life a different way. They're not bitching about it, moaning about it, right. hating their life about it. And they're not, not so judging you either. In the, in the pursuit of people freedom, do not let others affect how you're out there that are not people that should be giving you the advice seek the next level mm -hmm. of great mentors and great coaches that give you the ability to raise your value make you so damn good at what you do make you savvy smart and a leader teach you to be cool and not a <laughs> d-bag so that you can go out there and be hanging in a room of cool people that's it because that's the thing cool people having a great time kicking ass in life they don't want the fucking dick bags and that stuff coming into their circles. They're like, you're bringing the energy down. Oh my God. I had to sit in the corner. I got sucked in the corner listening to you and what you bitch about all the freaking time and you're naysaying and you're doubting about, you're like, freedom is also about freaking curating the people that you have around you. That's right. To Which is why we decided to invite. And fun and 
which is why we decided to invite six of our, you know, favorite people from our mastermind to a holiday dinner because we were like, I want to be celebrating the end of this year with people that are rising up, putting their messages out in big ways, doing amazing things in the world, supporting others and doing the purpose freedom that we want to talk about next. Mm-hmm. And that is just Bring it home. the ability to do the exact meaningful and impactful work that you want to do. You know, when we talk to our friends that, you know, are, are kind of on the same road as us looking for those five freedoms or doing their visionary work, they're doing the work that lights them up every single day. It is not work to them or to us. What we do here, this is joyful. This is joyful, meaningful, impactful, um, I guess just every day. Every day making a difference. Making a difference type and of stuff. When you can learn how to do it work. that. With the business that you love right. and a brand that is your message, mm-hmm. that's just living joy. That's it. Happiness every freaking day. But a lot of people right now, the problem is, is they're in jobs and in corporations and small business where they may or may not be working under people that think this way. Yeah. So, and then they're around by the masses that all that, so they're just doing work. Who was it that was just sharing? Uh, Lewis again. He was just sharing the story about how he was working at a job, and he's just like every day I would go in there, and everyone's just like, "Hey, dude, you just got to show up. You got to just do your work." And there's about three hours of the day that you don't really have to do anything. So just it's kind of good work. Just take it. You can get it. And he's just like. I don't want to live this complacent, non-meaningful, I'm not trying to go chase my, but so many people live that way. Because he's a visionary. Correct. He correct. can't just so, sit there um, we'd be and be preaching to the choir with him, but right. Day, you know. But I think that some people might find that as an opportunity to just sit around and do nothing. Because, the majority again, do. it goes back to the ambition. And, you know, obviously our audience is um is kind of wired differently than that we're not wired to just want to sit around and twiddle our thumbs I remember having to do community service and like clean library books and it's like okay I don't want to be doing that kind of work just that monotonous everyday stuff that just doesn't give you any kind of meaning it's like we got purpose here on this this earth and we only have a very limited amount of time to make our legacy and make the impact that we want that we got to take action we got to go we can't be wasting our time even if it's paying us to sit around it's a waste yeah that's a that's a waste of the life the talents yeah and the gifts that we were given and the blessings that we have as compared to making the choice to pursue something of Meaning to leave the footprint, yeah. the thing that's going to be behind. And a lot of what we're sharing here as we're dancing between the freedoms and dancing between the the way it is, yeah. is to help you just be vigilant to these things. Because as Anna was saying, you might be wired different for this, but you have to be vigilant for it. Because at any moment, the world is the same. Because you turn on the TV, you turn on radio, you turn on the stupid talk show host things that are going on out there, and it's garbage talk, entertainment talk, like dark talk, scare talk, fear talk, all that kind of, we're, I just want you to be vigilant. We want you to be vigilant to being like, I'm now because I, I understand these things, I can see the mechanisms and the institutions and the systems and the ways that are in place, so I can choose to opt out. Where I, most people get stuck is they're, either in contemplation, I'm always thinking about changing, I'm always thinking about changing, but I'm not yet making the moves. Yeah. And they do that because they're often in confusion. There's so much information. God bless the internet and God bless the thing because that's how we build our businesses. And <laughs> that's whatnot. how you build the five freedoms. That's right. <laughs> but the, the thing about them also is like, how much information is now overloading us. Yeah. The problem isn't the information, it's the overload and then the integration. How do I go take steps? How do I go do this stuff from here? And a lot of the the tools and the training and the conversations and the things that we're gonna be bringing to you here is to help remove the confusion so you can pass through the contemplation and get into action taking and start truly rising as a visionary out there. Oh man, I feel like... That's just... That's how we bring it home. That's how we bring that's it home. That's how we bring it home. That's the bomb drop right there. I mean, boom. mic drop. Boom. Boom. We'll take it, people. So, 
hope you enjoyed this first inaugural episode. Yeah, and if the you call got, to arms, mm, the, the call mission, to arms, Anna, the demand of more from each of you yep. to no longer accept the status quo, to no longer allow small thinking to dictate your life, to not let the people around you hold you down, but instead to strive for the great people around you, to choose to figure out how do I go create the shift in my business and my brand and my message, my model to go out and achieve the financial freedom, the time freedom, the location, location freedom, freedom, so that you can be that happy place entrepreneur out there that is doing good work, that shifts this world in the short time that we have it. And as a reward for that, you live the extraordinary life. Get after it, visionaries. We'll see you next time. What's up, visionary? Did you like this episode? Well, if you're looking to bring your vision to life and into the world, go to thevisionaryplanner.com forward slash podcast to get access to our visionary toolbox. It's filled with free tools and trainings from us and all of our amazing guests. Until next time, keep rising up, visionaries.